Oh my god! What has happened to my Famicom controllers? Well, believe it or not, this is how you climb buildings in 8-bit. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Early in the arcades, I'm talking 1980, there was this little game called Crazy Climber. You play as a true thrill seeker climbing atop four skyscrapers, avoiding dangerous obstacles. Now this was before Donkey Kong revolutionized the climbing genre, how about that? In the arcade version, you used two joysticks to simulate the movements of the climbing. See, two joysticks, two arms, huh? It mimics the climbing action. Amazing. Now, this is not arcade corner, so what am I getting at? In 1986, Nichibutsu released Crazy Climber on the Famicom, which I believe to be the best home version. The graphics were updated from the original, it added more buildings and bonus stages, and it has a unique controller setup. Each complete copy of Crazy Climber comes with special climber stick attachments. Essentially, these turn your Famicom controller directional pads into joysticks. Like the arcade, you need two movement controllers. Most retro gamers think they can just pick up and play anything or at least figure it out after a little while. Well, not with Crazy Climber. You need some additional information. Otherwise, you'll be sitting there with one controller and you won't be climbing anything. You will not be able to figure it out. You must use both controllers and you can add the attachments. I was a little worried about throwing these on my pristine Famicom D-pads because the connection is straight up metal. But I think my babies will be all right. Okay. There. So that's it? Nope! You also have to hold them vertically with the joysticks at the top. Now you can actually play the game. You ready? No. Let's climb that first building. Initially the controls will throw you off even if you've set up everything properly. They just... You know, you've never controlled a character quite like this before. It's difficult to explain without experiencing it for yourself, but here's what I can tell you. The Player 1 controller moves your left arm, and the Player 2 controller, your right arm. Pressing up reaches an arm out, and pressing down pulls with that arm. You can also edge your grip to the left and right to move sideways across buildings. For most of your climbing, you'll get into this rhythm of opposing up and down movements on the D-pads. Lastly, there will be a few situations where you need to move down. Oh man, this was frustrating. I spent maybe an hour's worth of time just trying to figure out how to move down a little. I don't know, maybe my brain was exploding from all of the previously learned controls. I didn't think I was going to make it, guys and gals, but I got out of it and it's embarrassingly simple. All you really need to do to move down is this. Just move your arm over, down, and in, over, down, and in, and then you kind of push yourself down. That's all it was. Yeah, so, good luck. Not only do you need to reach the top of each building, you have to avoid many, many obstacles. Closing windows, bald dudes throwing objects out of windows, and Sometimes skeletons will be in the buildings. I don't know. I just don't understand the amount of excessive littering going on here. The Daredevil will also need to dodge poorly wired electric signs, crazy climber signs that are just falling off the building in case you forgot what this game was called, steel girders, even explosives. What do they have on top of this building that they do not want him to get to? As you reach higher floors, birds will start dumping on you, hopefully. Those aren't actual dumps. Wait, I think. Yep, yep, they are. And those are some wicked turds. The first building is a nice warm-up to get used to the controls and basic obstacles. It makes you feel like you can do this. Well, that changes quickly. This is by far one of the hardest Famicom games I've ever played. And considering it's based on an arcade game, the few lives you start with 
are not enough for the coin-popping danger ahead of you. The original arcade game has four skyscrapers that loop infinitely so you can earn a high score. The Famicom version has eight. Earning bonus lives to get through the game is very rare unless you uncover these creepy masks that pop out of the building if you pass a certain area. Luckily, the game offers an unlimited continue feature that starts you at the bottom of the building you last failed at. And as you ascend each skyscraper, you'll also have to avoid a King Kong, Godzilla, Kaiju creature of some kind. They usually just hang out on the side of the building and lazily attack. Not a major issue. Time, however, can be an issue. Often I needed to wait for things to clear up so I could continue my vertical maneuvers. But you can't sit around for too long. When the time is up, you fall to your death. I'm assuming from exhaustion. As with any video game, power-ups are there to help push you to the top. Clocks give you bonus time. Stopwatches will freeze enemies and falling objects. Medicine will give you limited invincibility and the balloons and propellers will lift you for a short while. Even with the power-ups, I was struggling to get through this game. I, I just feel like my thumbs aren't made for these joysticks. I felt like I was always pushing myself in the wrong direction and plummeting to my death. So I ended up removing them from my controllers for the more difficult stages. I need all the precision control I can get with some of these enemies. Like the window washers with their bearded faces and squeegees of death. And they like to show up on narrow sections that seem impossible to navigate. But then, you've got this Lakitu wannabe throwing lightning bolts at you in the later stages. Well, when you do reach the top, you'll have to safely grab onto the helicopters and hot air balloons that are waiting to fly you to the next skyscraper. Surprisingly, the Famicom version of Crazy Climber has a lot more going on than I realized. To truly beat the game, you have to complete all eight normal stages, but also uncover a series of four special stages. And how do you do that? Well, get ready for a change in the gameplay. Almost every building has a secret key hidden along your path to the top. If you can find and collect the key, a secret door will appear that takes the climber to a platforming stage. Whoa, whoa! You only get these in the Famicom version. And now that we've got some understanding of the controls, let's completely change it. When entering these stages, drop that second controller because it's time to get horizontal again. Run and jump your way around the level to pick up all the items that appear, which will then reveal a special medal. Once you collect medals for all the stages, you can take on the most difficult climbs of your little digital life. These newly unlocked stages will test you. The paths are narrow, the time limit is stressful, and the enemies and obstacles are all over the place. You've even got some weird new obstructions to get by on these final four stages. But if you can make it to the last bold, you'll need all your crazy climbing skills. With enough patience and grip strength, you'll make it to the tippy freaking top where a UFO is waiting to pick you up. The climber left the Earth in his UFO for his unending journey into space. Nobody, no, nobody has ever seen the climber since then. So that's your reward for completing Crazy Climber. You go to space in a UFO, ultimately to have your butthole probed by aliens. Willingly, apparently. Ah, worth it. It's not like you really have anything else to do. You can't really climb in space. You just sort of float around. I guess he's officially retired. For now.